Dear friends, nothing is more important than delivering safe food to our customers. With this in mind, we want to reaffirm our ongoing commitment to food safety. We are proud of our food safety record, and with good reason. McDonald's has earned a reputation for serving safe, high quality, wholesome food. Only through our constant attention to the details of food safety can we preserve, protect, and enhance our well-deserved reputation. In light of this, we want to remind you that it is the individual responsibility of each licensee and the Copco restaurant manager, without exception, to maintain and enforce all food safety procedures in his or her restaurant and to ensure total compliance with all such procedures. To help all of us focus more effectively on food safety, the food safety checklist must be completed daily in each and every restaurant. In addition to completing the food safety checklist daily and immediately correcting any deficiencies, each restaurant must keep the documents on file in the restaurant for 12 months from the last written entry. As an additional safeguard to our customers, McDonald's field personnel can update you with the knowledge to complete the checklist. To help, confirm and ensure that food safety checklists are being completed properly, they will conduct food safety audits regularly. Any procedures or practices which jeopardise the safety of any food product will be dealt with accordingly. We simply cannot tolerate any conditions which threaten the safety of the food we serve because the well-being of our customers always remains our primary goal. As a system, I know we are committed to the highest food safety standards and I thank you for your commitment. Outstanding QSC and V has been the heritage of our great past and together with 100% food safety compliance will be the basis for an even bigger future. The purpose of the food safety checklist is to ensure safe food is served which is consistent with McDonald's standards and local health codes. It is recommended that the relevant food safety checks are completed before any products are served. If checks cannot be completed immediately, they must be completed within 30 minutes of the commencement of breakfast or regular menu operations. The initial completion of the checklist should be done before 11 a.m. each day. Additional food safety checks must be completed in the cafe, and these have been outlined after the troubleshooting section. If you answer no to any item on the checklist, the problem must be corrected immediately. Under no circumstances are undercooked meat patties or chicken products ever to be served. To further ensure food safety, all restaurants are encouraged to complete all or a portion of the checklist more than once a day. Understand that completion of the checklist is only the minimum requirement. Always refer to your current Restaurant Essentials Workbook for correct procedures. Throughout the day, managers and crew need to be trained to recognize food safety risks, such as undercooked meat, and to take immediate and appropriate corrective actions. Two people are required to complete the checklist, one to record temperatures and the other person to perform the tasks. At least one of these people must be a manager. The first step in completing the food safety checklist is to take responsibility for its completion. This is done by filling out the details at the top of the day's checklist. Different coloured spatulas are used to prevent the cross-contamination from raw to cooked eggs. The white Hutzler spatula is used to handle cooked eggs and a yellow Hutzler spatula is used only for raw eggs. The yellow Hutzler spatula and all other raw egg utensils need to be kept on a dedicated stainless steel surface away from the white Hutzler and cooked egg utensils without a towel or cloth under it because grill cloths may serve as a breeding ground for bacteria. 
the surface should be wiped down frequently with a clean sanitized towel and all equipment must be washed, rinsed, sanitized and air dried every two hours as a minimum. To further prevent cross-contamination, blue gloves must be used when handling raw meat patties, raw sausage patties and shelled eggs. Use clear gloves when handling other products. Before you begin any temperature checks, you need to ensure the pyrometer is wiped with a clean sanitized cloth and calibrated. It is critical that you do this check daily to ensure any temperatures captured are accurate. To complete this calibration, fill a hot beverage cup with ice and add cold clear water from the drink tower or soda water up to the top of the ice, giving you a ratio of 60% ice to 40% water. Place the probe in the ice water and stir continuously until the temperature stabilizes. If the pyrometer is functioning properly, the readout should be zero degrees, plus or minus 0.5 of a degree Celsius. If it's correct, proceed with the completion of the checklist. If the pyrometer is not calibrated correctly, the checklist must still be completed. Use your backup pyrometer or probe or obtain one from your Macopco consultant or owner operator. Always record any actions taken on the recorded action sheet. The restaurant's pyrometer must be calibrated by an authorized supplier once per year. To check that McMuffin eggs have reached the correct internal temperatures, cook a full run. When the timer sounds, randomly select two eggs and place them onto a breakfast base. Place the remaining eggs into a UHC tray and then into the UHC. Use a white Hutzler spatula to slice the eggs in half. Examine the yolk. It should be gelled, not runny. If either egg is undercooked, wash, rinse, sanitize and air dry the spatula to prevent cross-contamination. Discard any eggs that do not meet visual characteristics and take corrective action. Overcooking eggs has a negative impact on finished product quality. Temperature control checks must be completed on all operating dairy machine reservoirs or hoppers. Place the clean sanitized liquid probe into the mix and stir it around until the temperature readout stabilizes. Mix temperature should be between 1 and 4 degrees Celsius. There should be a thermometer permanently mounted inside both the walk-in fridge and freezer units in addition to any external reading devices. Make sure the door has not been opened recently to ensure the unit you are checking is at its normal operating temperature. Read the temperature on the mounted thermometer inside the unit. As an alternative, the temperature of all units, including countertop refrigerators, can be measured using the pyrometer. Place the pyrometer with the needle probe on a shelf inside the unit. Leave the pyrometer in the unit for five minutes and then take the reading. McCafe refrigeration units can be checked using the same methods as countertop refrigerators. If temperatures cannot be achieved for countertop refrigerators, refer to your restaurant's equipment manual. For walk-in fridge and freezer units, measure the temperatures of products inside the unit by placing the probe between two inner packages of any product until the temperature readout stabilizes. If product temperatures cannot be attained, troubleshoot to find out the cause of the problem and then take action to correct the problem. Time control involves all refrigerated products being used in code. Spot check all refrigerated products including dairy products for use through dates and proper rotation of products in the walk-in refrigerator. Ensure the secondary shelf lives of all products are recorded and followed appropriately. Record the oldest use through dates as required by the daily food safety checklist. Discard any out of date products. Hygiene control is very important in controlling possible occurrence of foodborne illnesses. All employees working in all areas of the restaurant must be healthy. Any employee who is known to be suffering from any foodborne illness, medical condition, heavy cold or flu, which could result in the illness being passed from a person to the food, should be excluded from food preparation and handling. 
Any employee with open cuts, infected wounds or sores on their hands that cannot be protected by a blue adhesive strip and glove must also be excluded from food preparation and handling. All employees must wash their hands hourly as a minimum. You need to verify that these hygiene control procedures are in place and being adhered to throughout the entire shift. Check all hand wash sinks in the restaurant. Are they stocked with all supplies? Is there warm running water? Do the dispensers and dryers work? The soap used in the kitchen, McCafe and crew toilets must be antimicrobial hand wash. McD AMH. If the restaurant does not have crew toilets, McD antimicrobial hand wash must be used in the customer restrooms. Spot check the condition of employees' gloves and check that the correct glove procedure is being used to ensure there is no cross-contamination of non-coated raw and cooked foods. During the shift, ensure that gloves are being changed a minimum of once per hour or as required. In our clean cloth bucket, the sanitizer solution must be clean and free of food debris or particles. Change the sanitizer solution if the solution becomes dirty or when a new load of washed cloths is added into the bucket. Ensure that the McD sanitizer is fully diluted in 9.5 litres of water before placing the cloths in the bucket. Do not put dirty cloths into the clean cloth bucket. Make certain McD sink pack is available and being used in the third compartment of the washroom sink. McD sink pack should be prepared using lukewarm water. Follow up during the shift to ensure the solution in the sink is clean, free of food debris or particles and changed every two hours. This is the only place McD sink pack is to be used. For all other sanitizer requirements, use McD sanitizer. Prepare the solution daily in the waste knot dispenser using lukewarm water. Before cooking fillet, check the vat is filled to the mark indicated on the vat. If the level is not correct, top the vat up before proceeding. The fillet vat temperature should be between 163 degrees and 169 degrees Celsius. Record the vat temperature displayed. Then record the vat temperature probed. Place the liquid probe into the vat, wait for the pyrometer to stabilize and record the displayed temperature on the pyrometer. Refer to the appropriate MRC for specific instructions on checking vat temperatures in your restaurant. Ensure that all results are clearly marked on the daily food safety checklist. We must ensure that the internal temperatures of chicken McNuggets after cooking are at or above 74 degrees Celsius. Make sure the oil level in the vat is correct and the vat is set on the correct temperature and time. You must check the recovery time of the vat prior to completing the integrity check. For detailed instructions on how to check recovery times, refer to the appropriate PM card for your restaurant. Place a minimum of four McNugget portions in a basket, or place a full run if you cannot check vat recovery times. Place the basket into the vat. After the McNugget portions are cooked, empty the basket into a fried product UHC tray. Use tongs or clear gloves to randomly select a McNugget and immediately use your sanitized probe to take two temperature readings. Repeat this procedure with three additional McNuggets. Record the temperatures in the daily food safety checklist as they are measured. Record the lowest measured temperature in the space provided on the checklist. The minimum internal temperature for all chicken products is 74 degrees Celsius. Under no circumstances are any undercooked chicken products to be served. McNuggets may be sold after testing, provided a clean, sanitized probe was used. McChicken patties must also be tested. After cooking McChicken patties, immediately place them in the UHC for one minute. Then, follow the same procedures as for checking chicken McNuggets. Remember to re-sanitize the probe before taking temperatures, so that the patties may be sold after testing. You must perform beef integrity daily on each meat product, excluding bacon on all platens that will be used to cook that particular product. Therefore, 
If you know you will be changing platens between products, such as 10 to 1 and 4 to 1 throughout the day due to a promotion, it is strongly recommended that you perform beef integrity on both products on that platen at transition and record the timer settings required. That way you will avoid disruption during the rush, as you will already know what timer setting you will need to use for each product. In 24-hour restaurants, beef integrity must be re-performed on any grill that is cleaned and then reused. It's important that you check the following before commencing any meat temperature checks. Are all grill minimums correct? Are lockbacks in place? Are temperature and product settings correct? Have all sections of the grill been turned on for at least 30 minutes? And, if this is applicable to your model of grill, are the steam deflectors fitted correctly? Visually inspect the raw product. Check for signs of freezer burn or partially thawed patties. We will review raw product and equipment in more detail in the troubleshooting section of this video. Record the current timer setting for the product to be tested and the time of the test in the space provided on the checklist. Temperature readings must only be taken on full runs of meat. You will need to take four readings, one temperature from the center of each patty probed. There are two standards that must be met when completing beef integrity. The food safety standard requires all four individual meat patty readings to be at or above 69 degrees Celsius. If any of the patties tested are below 69 degrees Celsius, the run must be discarded. The quality standard requires that one of those four individual readings must fall between 69 and 74 degrees Celsius. Overcooked meat patties will be dry and tasteless and have a negative impact on the quality of the finished product. It is recommended that sausage temperatures are checked on the first run of sausage for each day. Wearing a blue glove, cook a full run of sausage patties on the designated platen following normal patty placement guidelines. As soon as the platen rises, remove patties two at a time in the order that they were laid. Place the four corner patties onto a breakfast base and the remaining patties into a UHC tray. Immediately after all the sausage is removed, probe the first patty. It is critical that temperatures are measured immediately after all patties are removed from the grill. This is because the patties begin to cool as soon as they are pulled. Remember that you need to probe at an angle midway through the depth of the patty at the center. It is critical to allow a few seconds for the temperature of each reading to stabilize before removing the probe. Continue to probe the remaining corner sausage patties using the same procedure in the order that they were removed from the grill. All four temperatures must be at or above 69 degrees Celsius to meet the food safety standard and one patty must be between 69 to 74 degrees Celsius to meet the quality standard. Note that even though the other three temperatures were higher than 74 degrees Celsius, this test run meets the quality standard because of the one that tested between 69 and 74 degrees Celsius. It's normal to have temperature variations on the same run. These patties are moist and tender and cooked just right. However, in this example, we can see that two of the temperature readings were below the food safety standard of 69 degrees Celsius. All four internal temperatures must be at or above the food safety standard. Therefore, this run must be discarded. If the internal temperatures are not meeting the food safety or quality standard, troubleshoot checking crew procedures, raw product and equipment. If everything is in order, adjust the cooking time, clean and sanitize the pyrometer probe and repeat the test on another run of patties to verify that all of the internal temperatures meet both the food safety and quality standard. Refer to your equipment manual for instructions on increasing the cooking time. Remember, after making any adjustments to the cooking time, you must retest with another full run of sausage patties. Repeat these steps for each grill platen used for cooking sausage. Record all actions taken, final temperatures and cook times in the food safety daily checklist. The procedure for taking internal temperatures of 10 to 1 meat patties is the same as sausage, except that the patties must be seasoned before removing from the grill. The four corner patties must be removed directly onto dressed buns along with the remaining cooked patties. The probed patties may be sold after testing as long as a sanitized probe was used and the food safety and quality standards were met. 
For four to one patties, it is important that the same person that removes the patties also measures the internal temperatures. After removing the last patty, wipe and replace the spatula. Pick up the pyrometer and probe the first corner patty removed. If the internal temperatures are not meeting the food safety or the quality standard, discard the product and troubleshoot. Made for you restaurants should test 10 to 1 and 4 to 1 patties on a breakfast base. Refer to your restaurant essentials workbook for further instructions. In this example, all four temperatures are above 69 degrees Celsius for the food safety standard, but do not meet the quality standard. This test run is unacceptable from a quality point of view and must be discarded. Repeat these tests until all operational grill platens have been checked. If one platen of the grill will be used to cook two types of beef patties during the day, make sure to do a complete check on both types of patties. Record the corresponding platen number in the space indicated on the daily food safety checklist. It's important to have an accurate history of each platen, so make sure all managers know how they are numbered. It's important for beef quality that patties are seasoned and removed as quickly as possible after the platen begins to rise and within the target removal times. To meet the food safety standard, all internal temperatures must be at or above 69 degrees after cooking. At least one of the four internal temperatures you measure must meet the quality standard of an internal temperature between 69 and 74 degrees Celsius. External colour and puddling juices should not be used as signs of proper cooking. To ensure safe food, always follow the procedures that are explained in the training materials. One additional reminder. Starting cook time guidelines are just that, guidelines. Don't think of them as set cook times. Actual cook times are to be reviewed and changed frequently. Overcooking meat will lead to dry, tasteless meat patties and have a negative impact on the quality of the finished product. Hot holding temperature checks must be completed on all UHC slots in operation for both breakfast and regular menu day parts. Ensure the product being tested has been held in the UHC for the minimum recommended time as it is outlined in the rationale section of the Restaurant Essentials workbook. Then, wearing clear gloves, Pull out a tray of product and insert a clean, sanitized probe into the center of the front stack to obtain a reading. These products can be served to customers, provided a clean, sanitized probe has been used. Record the temperature reading in the space provided on the Food Safety Daily Checklist. As per instructions in your Restaurant Essentials Workbook, repeat this procedure on one product from each UHC slot in operation. New and promotional products have become part of our daily business and it's important to ensure the same food safety and quality standards are followed whenever these are introduced to our menu. Always follow the food safety procedures provided in the promotional folder for each new product and review the changes page of the Restaurant Essentials Workbook every quarter for any updates to food safety procedures. Discard any products that do not meet food safety standards and troubleshoot. If any undercooking is suspected, or if any low internal temperatures are found, do not serve the product. Use the following guidelines for crew procedures, raw product and equipment. Once again, ask yourself the following questions. Were the temperature settings correct? Is the release sheet being wiped a minimum of four times per hour, and is it in good condition and free of build-up? Was the correct patty placement used? Ensure that no onions are on top of four to one patties. Were patties removed in the same order they were laid? For ten to one and four to one, were the patties seasoned? Was a sharp spatula used? Tearing of the meat patty surface results in substantial heat loss. Are the product selections correct? Are the restaurant grill utensils on clean, sanitized stainless trays or equipment holders? Do not place grill utensils on grill cloths because grill cloths may serve as a breeding ground for bacteria. Remember when completing the internal temperature test, the maximum run of patties must be used. These are the points to remember. For any handling of raw meat, 
Blue disposable gloves should be worn. For example, opening new boxes of meat, stock taking or checking delivery temperatures. Raw meat can only be handled with blue gloves. Once raw meat is handled, the blue gloves must be discarded to prevent cross-contamination. We should be checking the raw product on arrival into the restaurant. Open the first carton from the delivery in the freezer. Check the carton for the use-by date. Wearing blue disposable gloves, check the product temperature by placing a clean, sanitized probe between two patties. If the temperature is warmer than minus 12 degrees Celsius, repeat the temperature check with another box of beef patties. We should not accept frozen stock that is warmer than minus 12 degrees Celsius. If this applies to your restaurant's regulations, record the product temperatures and detail the corrective action steps taken on the delivery record sheet in your restaurant essentials workbook. Check for these characteristics both on delivery into the restaurant and before cooking the product. Do not accept products if there is an unreadable use-by date or no use-by date at all, excessive ice crystals, or patties stuck together. The temperature of patties needs to be cooler than minus 12 degrees Celsius. Patties should separate easily. We need to check that the patties are pinkish. Visually inspect one in every 10 boxes, beginning with the first box of each product off the delivery vehicle. Check the boxes for signs of damage and possible contamination to the product. If your meat does not meet the required characteristics, it must not be used. Troubleshoot to find the cause of the problem and take action to resolve the issue. You must adhere to the secondary shelf life of meat patties in the grill side freezer as per your pocket quality reference guide. Not doing so will lead to thawing and undercooked patties. When checking equipment, look at the following. Are all sections of the grill turned on? Is the grill calibrated correctly? Check its calibration using the appropriate MRC. Check for excessive carbon buildup around the upper platen and on the release sheet. Ensure that they are cleaned thoroughly during closing every day. If it's applicable to your model grill, check that the front steam deflector panel is in place correctly, that is, flush against the front of the top platen, so that excessive steam or heat is not lost in this area. Check your grill side freezers. Have they been given at least 45 minutes to attain correct temperature before meat is placed in them? Is the cabinet lid kept closed to retain temperature? If it's applicable to your model grill, check that all product selection knobs are locked in place. Are spatulas and grill scrapers clean, free of burrs and sharpened at least five times a day? Blunt utensils may allow carbon to build up on grill surfaces. If all of these areas meet standard and you still cannot achieve the food safety or quality standards, you should adjust your cooking time by one second increments until you achieve the required results. If you still cannot achieve the food safety standard, you may have a problem with your grill or raw product. Contact your operations consultant or owner-operator immediately. Under no circumstances are we to sell beef patties which do not meet the food safety standard. To achieve this, you may need to increase the cooking time until you ascertain what the real problem is. Remember, this is only a short-term solution. Also remember that cooking patties for too long will result in dry, poor quality product that does not meet the quality standard. If internal temperatures do not meet the food safety and quality standards, you must perform a second integrity check to verify internal temperatures are being met. Record the results of this test in the 24-hour retest section of the checklist. Use the recorded action sheet section of the checklist to record problems identified action taken and the results of that action. The person taking action must be recorded as well as the restaurant manager's verification that the problem was resolved. Use the recorded action sheet area for general information and additional space for recording temperatures as needed. It is critical that the manager for each day part, that is breakfast, lunch, dinner and overnight, reviews the checklist for 100% completion, spot checks items as necessary, and continues to follow up and monitor food safety throughout the shift. Once they are satisfied that checklist completion and implementation is 100%, they must record their name and signature in the relevant day part manager space.
The McCafe food safety checklist must be completed as an addition to the standard daily food safety checklist. Several areas to be checked in McCafe use the same procedures covered earlier. However, there are some additional procedures that you need to know. Employees need to be aware that a small percentage of customers are sensitive to and may have a reaction to some ingredients. Common allergens may include dairy, gluten and nuts. To prevent the cross-contamination with full cream milk or skim milk, the soy milk jug and utensils must be used for soy milk only. Label soy milk jugs correctly and ensure utensils such as spoons are stored separately or alternatively washed and sanitized after every use. If cross-contamination of the soy milk jug or soy milk utensils is known or even suspected, the contents of all the jugs must be discarded and the jugs and utensils must be thoroughly cleaned and sanitized prior to reuse. To prevent the cross-contamination of non-gluten-free products to gluten-free products, separate storage containers, display plates, clean utensils and gloves are to be used when handling gluten-free products. Dedicated colored tongs must be used when serving products to a customer. If gluten-free products have been mixed with non-gluten-free products, discard the gluten-free products immediately. Always ensure that all gluten-free products are thawed, displayed and served separately from other non-gluten-free products. Can, can you tell me, are those, are those Freons dairy-free? Just one minute. If a customer inquires about ingredients of any of our products, you can refer to the food sensitivity table in the latest version of the Pocket Quality Reference Guide or contact the customer service department. There are three different coloured cloths in McCafe, each with a specific use. Use yellow cloths on the milk steam wand, blue cloths in the wash-up area, and red cloths on benches and all equipment. Ensure that enough cloths are available and that they are being used correctly throughout the shift. Keep clean cloths in the clean cloth bucket. To make the sanitizer solution, place half a packet of McD sanitizer solution in the cloth bucket and three quarter fill it with warm water. Change the sanitizer solution when it becomes dirty and when a new load of washed cloths is added to the bucket. Change cloth buckets and sanitized water every four hours. Place dirty cloths into the dirty cloth bucket after use. Do not put dirty cloths back into the clean bucket. Buckets must be clean and free of food debris or particles. Check that all cleaning and sanitation procedures are being followed throughout the shift as required. Check that utensils that come into contact with food products are washed in a dishwasher every four hours. Make sure that milk frothing equipment, including jugs and spoons, are pre-rinsed and scrubbed with an on-scratch pad, then washed in a dishwasher every two hours. Ensure the blender is correctly disassembled, washed, rinsed and sanitized every two hours. Do not wash the blender in the dishwasher. Check that there are adequate supplies of McD dishwashing detergent and K rinse aid available for the dishwasher. Make sure that the two bottles are full, properly connected to the dishwasher and that the feed tubes are submerged fully into the liquid. To prevent milk buildup in and around the steam arm, use a clean and sanitized yellow cloth to wipe the steam wand after each use and purge for three seconds. If milk buildup does occur, wrap a clean sanitized yellow cloth around the steam arm, turn the steam on for 10 seconds and keep the cloth in place. Remove the cloth carefully and repeat until the residue is removed. Never use abrasive materials to clean the steam arm. Spot check all frozen and refrigerated McCafe products for use through dates and proper rotation in the walk-in freezer and refrigerator. Check that secondary shelf lives of all products are being recorded and followed. If you have any questions, you can always call your owner-operator or operations consultant. Brilliant. Thank you.
Thank you very much for your help. Bye -bye. Making integrity checks a priority in your restaurant will ensure that our business and the customer's safety will never be put in a compromising position. It is obviously critical to our success that all these procedures be followed. Completing the daily food safety checklist is one of the ways that you can ensure that McDonald's will always be our customers' favourite way and place to eat.